All right, in this video, don't mind the mess, got some Christmas stuff out here. Uh, we'll be taking a little walk around of all my signals. I'll give you a little bit of information on each one. First things first, get this cabinet turned on. Don't mind the, the mess in here. There's uh, a lot going on and I'm running out of room. So it is what it is for now until either I get a bigger cabinet or split this up into multiple controllers, which I do have, but it's another project for another time. Let's fire this up. So when this thing fires up, I got Sean's controller here for my preemption and it will actually start this one up by default. And uh, if there's a preemption detected the, the on the controller, these lights will actually stay in flash until this shuts off. There we go. I have some detection stuff here and preemption, but nothing set up yet. This will be the next project here. Here's my um, UK style pedestrian button, modified by Sean, obviously. Got my streamline right here. This one actually has the, uh, again, there's gonna be a lot of Sean in this video because he's pretty much modified a lot of uh, what I have in my collection. Um, actually that is this sensor. So if I actually, if I wave my hand in front of this sensor, that will actually flash my railroad lights. The Polara navigators will say some stuff and I actually have this blue light come on at the same time and that will stay on for the duration of that preemption. And these lights, this, um, left turn arrow comes on and uh, this oh, this uh, doghouse turns green as well. That's on overlap eight. Um, the, my intersection's not really set up as a standard intersection. A lot of it's just to really show off the lights, but in my mind, it makes sense. So just bear with me here. Uh, and you guys have seen the Canadian doghouse before. The square red, masked diamond yellow. And of course I had to set it up with the well, I got the green right arrow and flashing yellow right arrow as well, and that kind of goes with my uh, flashing left uh, gentral over there. And I'll get to that soon. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, you got the firehouse signal. This is just your standard uh, your Canadian GE. A little newer, but still metal. It's just a uh, just a plastic uh, mast red lens. Uh, over here, you have your kind of standard Econolite bubble back uh, Canadian style. Decided to throw some snow sentries in here since I have way too many of them. I've seen this in Toronto with the snow sentries on the pedestrian signals, so I thought I'd do it too. Uh, this one here is my uh, Chapel Hill, just kind of made out of spare parts and a kind of a beat up uh, back plate from a Fortran, so it's whatever, it works for me. Decided to go with the black visors and I just have it on a hanger there. Um, over here, again, is another Sean Breen special. I'll, uh, hopefully this light will change, we'll see this change in a bit uh, with the Relume style moving eyes, as you guys have probably seen in my last video. Um, it's actually a wink matic Let's see if I can find the brand on the back yet. Yeah, you can see there. And it's just the LED insert for it, which is actually a different size than some of the other 16-inch signals I've seen. This one's here is a bit odd. Um, over here you have the Krauss Heinz, the Weight Walk. This is my oldest signal. Um, well, I know it's hard for me in Canada to find old vintage signals. This one was, uh, 
Actually, I found some Type Ds on Kijiji, local, or my buy and sell here. Um, I think it was in Ontario, and there were some beacons, and then I ended up trading another collector for the Type DT uh, Weight Walk, which I would prefer to have anyway. Um, so that kind of worked out for me. It's not in bad shape for being an older signal. Uh, over here is your, well, it's another just a Econolite spare part signal with uh, some masked uh, bicycle lights in it. Uh, and you can see uh, my strobes. They were, um, uh, oh man, the uh, just well, it's xenon or whatever. I, I can't think of the word right now. But these ones, I got them changed to LED just because the other, uh, the, the transformers on the other ones were broken. Oh, uh, there's the moving eyes there. And that will go green with the with the bicycle signal. And on the same phase is the Neart um, pedestrian signal, which is quite rare with the incandescent Canadian hand man symbols. Uh, yeah, the, it needs to trigger through again. Uh, didn't the program on the timer didn't pick up yet. Uh, the bottom section's actually just a four train, I believe. Um, has, it's very similar looking to the Canadian GE, but the hinges there are a little different. Um, I've seen a three section pedestrian signal, uh, in just outside of Montreal. And I thought I'd replicate it here. Uh, then here, yeah, as you can see, I got more snow sentries on my, uh, McCain, even though it's halogen, I just, again, I thought it would be kind of funny. Over here is the ASI. Uh, this one was a cool find and actually found some spare parts for it at Phil's place, which was really helpful. I had to put these hinges on it because the ones that were on, well, this one just didn't have any. It was missing. The signal's not in great shape, but the bimodal um, incandescent I thought was kind of cool. Uh, and then above it is a LFE Eagle combination with uh, LED uh, transit signal. On the bottom is actually a, it's a glass lens. It used to be a T. You can kind of see, I, I taped it up to make it kind of look like a, a red transit signal. Um, it works. You can't really tell, and it has the louver on it. Um, to the left of that is the Siemens Meller from the UK. And uh, I mentioned before, it actually has transformers inside of it because um, they use 230 volts over there, 50 hertz, and it changes it down to 12 volts. Uh, so I just bypassed them uh, and got, uh, and now they're just straight 120. And over here, you got the Polara Navigator. Oh, and it's going. press it again, it will just re-trigger throughout the whole phase. I have it set up to do that. You don't hear that sound too much, so I figured I'd use it. I've heard it in Toronto at one of their scramble crossings there. Uh, I got the Eagle X over here, the four-way. I have smileys in it. I know they're not, it's not, wasn't originally in this signal, but it, like I said, it's hard for me to Four ways are just not available in Canada, so I'm working with what I got. Got some Chinese arrows in there as well. This one is uh, one that I know nobody else has. It is the uh, that made by Mark Four Industries? It's a lane control signal that was on my uh, on the McDonald Bridge, uh, going from Dartmouth to Halifax there, and they upgraded them to LED a couple of years ago, and I found this at the scrapyard for thirty bucks. It's heavy as all can be, and but anyway, and now this is its final resting place. Well, until I move someday. Uh, and the next to that is my bicycle signal, Garberini, uh, which is actually from France. And I had there was um, somebody gave me some information on this one on the forum, so I appreciate that. Uh, anyway, it's just uh, incandescent behind there. Um, it was uh, converted to 120 volts before I purchased it from somebody on Kijiji in Quebec. Uh, and it just has this odd banding that, anyway, it was a pain in the butt to put on, but anyway, it's it's on there, and just don't bump it too much. 
a uh, couple bulldogs above that bulldog threes polera uh camera that does nothing don't worry about that and just a toy traffic light that i actually have hardwired into the controller and uh, the lights flash because it actually has flasher sockets in it so but like i said it is a toy but it is a real traffic light in this scenario um and my pile of controllers conolite peak a couple of eagles some Novaks uh, down there, a couple actual detection cameras, and an extra navigator. Uh, and just all my crap on the floor. Extra controller over here as well. I'm not uh, not sure what I'm doing with that yet, but I think, like I said, I'll someday I will uh, figure that out. And over here to the other side of the basement, we have a. Well, I got another Econo light, a uh, flashing beacon. A couple signs on the wall here. My uh, McCain clock, again, Sean, thank you, you're the man. So I got another Polaro Navigator on this side. So over here uh, is actually an ICC, like I said, Sean, thank you. The Wait. neon tubes were busted and non-existent transformers, so I was just decided to use the existing mask and go with red green uh, LEDs in behind here. If you don't look too hard at it, you can't really tell. Uh, you'll see the GE Gentral, the flashing green, Wait. keep it Canadian, diamond yellow, and I put some Cooper square reds in it for now. I'm probably gonna put the incandescent lenses back in. Uh, so here we have kind of a combo signal. Got a Fortran. I believe it's a TCT, next to the 3M, 131, everyone's favorite. Some arrow lenses. Uh, no masking yet, but I will do that soon. Um, yeah, fiber optic, walk, don't walk, uh, old LED uh, countdown timer. And I got the flashing yellow arrow on the Gentral as well to keep it... Uh, oh, I gotta have a little bit of uh, American in there. I gotta be, feel a little bit more, a little bit more freedom. Then we got uh, yeah all all arrow lenses in the 3M, and then behind myself here is the my Eagle flat back corner. They're not rotted, but the uh, the nine inch pedestrian signal was something I've always wanted to have with walk don't walk lenses, long tunnel visor on it, and a 12 8 8 12 uh, signal I made out of some spare parts with a uh, through arrow on the bottom that comes on when the when the pedestrian light goes to walk, which hopefully we'll see here in a sec. Um, kind of a mishmash of LEDs in that one, but, uh, you know, it works for now. An extra Garbarini bicycle signal. I'm not sure what to do with that yet. And then you got a old GE street light over here. Just a LED, or actually, no, I think it's a compact fluorescent uh, bulb in there. It takes a little while to turn on. Yeah, there's the GE logo, um, just to kind of make it feel like it's high-pressure sodium, but it's actually not. Uh, got another mini, uh, another Sean Breen special over here, mini traffic light. A couple squishy uh, stress ball type things back there. Yeah, the light's just about to change to walk here. We'll watch this cycle through again. Oh, and then next to me here is just a preemption spotlight that, that comes on with the F signal. So there's your uh, through arrow. I'm going to do an overlap eventually so the actual uh, red sh turns off. It'll be more like the Quebec sequence. And there's the red green uh, walk don't walk there. So actually we're going to trigger the this again. Well, actually, there we go. There, so that changed the lights pretty quick. Furnace just kicked on. Ignore that. So these will just flash for just a preset amount of time. I have it set up on just a standard timer. And then when they when they shut off, so the overlap screen over there. There, that will shut off, and then the light over here will uh, change. 
and it will always re-trigger back to the uh, gentle and will always give you the flashing green after the uh, after that preemption expires. And then the lights will just kind of go back to uh, normal after that. And then back to the flashing yellow arrow. Button wasn't pressed, so it doesn't do the advanced pedestrian phase. And other than that, that's a uh, walk around of all my signals. Plus a couple signs that you can see there. And if you guys have any questions for me, feel free to ask. I'm always open to new ideas and whatnot. I'll probably be changing a couple things with my collection pretty soon. There's the button to re-trigger the that thing there. You can see back here the or the floodlights, not the spotlights, but and then that will uh I have that one set up not to really uh, change the lights a whole lot so that these cycles will still continue as normal. And then that one that one shuts off pretty quick. Yeah, so anyway, she all fits in there pretty good and I'm pretty happy with, uh, with what I got set up so far and uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you.